What's up guys, welcome to another video. Now on this channel, we've been making a few videos talking about top five supercars for under 50,000 euros, 100,000 euros. And I said I'd make another video in the near future, but I thought what could be potentially interesting is talking about the five worst supercars or luxury cars you could buy right now. Now I do wanna say that in general, basically any car right now is a bad idea. The market is kind of so all over the place that I don't think buying a car in general right now is a bad idea. But if you were to buy a car, these five would probably be the worst. Now, Basically, what we're going to be talking about here is depreciations, cars that you could buy that would basically just be a bad buy and why they would be a bad buy. Depreciation, obviously, is the difference between when you buy the car, the value it loses as soon as you put a few miles on it. One of the kings of this is the first car we're going to be talking about right now, the Bentley Mulsanne Speed. Kind of a rival to the Rolls-Royce Phantom. It's Bentley's biggest, most luxurious car, a slightly pumped up version of the base Mulsanne. And it comes in, we're going to be talking euros here, European prices, because that's where most of them are for sale. It comes in list price at 374,000 euros, which is a lot of money. Now, once you actually spec these, they run more like 420,000 euros because the spec goes very, very fast. Loads of expensive options on these. So the average price, let's say around 420,000 euros. So much money. Now, these things tend to depreciate like a rock, which is why we're speaking about it here. Not many people, A, can afford them. If they can, it seems like mo most people kind of tend to go for the Rolls-Royce Phantom, which is a great car. There's actually nothing wrong with the Bentley Mulsanne Speed. I've never driven one myself, but I've been inside one. Yeah, I think they look cool, and I'm sure they're super comfortable. Fantastic car. I know they drink quite a bit of fuel, but overall, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the supply is not particularly limited, but there isn't a huge demand for these cars. And seeing as they depreciate so much. You can pick them up, relatively speaking, comparing to the list price, fairly cheap. None of these cars you can ever pick up for cheap, realistically. But that means that why would you go buy a brand new one where you can pick one up for half the price only a few months later? An example, I went on a website and found a car for sale for 158,800 euros. This car had just under 10,000 miles, so 14,000 kilometers, which is mind-blowing. I mean, obviously, that's still a ton of money for a luxury car of this type, obviously, but that, we calculated, brings you to 16 euros per kilometer. I mean, what? That means, for, for example, for me to drive to the airport would cost me, in depreciation by kilometers alone, over 200 euros every time I go to the airport and then another 200 to come back. 400 euros just to do the airport run because of the amount of depreciation per kilometer. It's mind blowing. And let alone a car that's got 60,000 kilometers, 70,000 kilometers on the clock because people often drive these quite a bit. So the fact that you can find quite a few for sale secondhand because when they came out, people were buying them more than today, yet they still kept their kind of ludicrous list price means that these are the first in our list in terms of cars to probably avoid, especially right now. Second on the list is the new BMW M8 Grand Coupe, the 617 horsepower four-door version of the kind of latest greatest from BMW. They're top of the range, luxury car, four doors, back seats, 617 horsepower from a V8 engine. These things are really, really cool. I think they look great, they'll perform fantastically, and there is nothing, again, particularly wrong with the car, mechanically. They're popular, they come from a German brand, you know they're not gonna break down, but yet again, there is no limit in terms of the supply of them, and people are buying them up quite a bit, which means that you're gonna be getting more and more good deals on them. These start at 170,000 euros, around about there, but obviously once you've put a spec on them, if you've got a heavily specced one, you can be running around 200,000 euros. Personally, I don't really see them holding above the 100,000 euro mark for much longer than 12 months. I think they'll be kind of coming down around 100,000 euros in that time, especially the ones with heavy mileage. That makes them a pretty risky car to buy because at that price range, if you're gonna be losing about 50% of the car within 12 months, probably one to avoid. I think the coupes would hold better, but the grand coupe, just from the fact that there's less demand for them, people aren't as interested in having them, but they're still running a similar list price, just makes it a slightly more risky car to buy. I've heard rumors of dealerships already offering really good deals on these, knocking massive sums like 20, 30,000 euros off the price of the car just to kind of get rid of them. So that's never good when dealerships are sitting on stock, especially after Corona, what we're going through now. I think the market for these BMWs is going to go way down. But in 12 months, I think it would be a great buy. But right now, new, I'd stay away. Can I just point out as well, this is just from me kind of geeking out on my computer. I'm no expert. This is from talking to friends. I had a conversation with some of the other YouTubers. You know, I spoke to James, I spoke to Paul, I spoke to Sam, I spoke to me and we all had a conversation and these are kind of some of the cars that we thought would probably be the ones you 
shouldn't really look at right now. Now the next one is going to be fairly controversial because it is brand new. The McLaren 765 LT. McLarens obviously have a reputation for depreciation. Now we all know that the 720S kind of shot down. 570S's now, you can find them for around 80,000 pounds. The 600 LT even came flying down. And the 675 LT, which originally went up in value, came shooting down. That is again down to the fact that McLaren are supplying so many different models, so many different cars, so quickly and bunched together. So there's constantly kind of a new car coming out. And that means that the value of the ones that are currently for sale isn't really holding that much. And dealerships are indeed sitting on stock. Now, this is probably the greatest supercar, arguably for sale right now. I mean, I think the 720S, so the stock 720S, is the best all round supercar money can buy. The 765 LT is just gonna be an improved, more beefed up version of that. So definitely warrants a higher list price, but is it gonna be able to keep its value? I'm not sure. Rumor has it, it's not particularly hard to get your hands on one, which is never positive. And it's kind of arrived at the wrong timing, which obviously no one could plan with all of us being locked away in quarantine for a few weeks, no one has been able to purchase any of these cars. So there's going to be a big stock sat in the dealerships and obviously also quite a few cancelled orders. And that usually results in dealerships giving good prices on cars and that drops the secondhand value of them. Now just for example's sake, the list price of these is listed at $358,000, which is obviously a lot of money, but you can already find a normal 720S for 194,000 euros with only 7,000 kilometers online. Now obviously it's going to be a completely different car, much much better to drive, but is it going to warrant being cost almost double? of what you can get a secondhand 720S for? I don't know. Because once you spec these out, they're going to be close to the 400,000 euro mark. Again, it kind of it kills me to say this because I'm such a huge fan of the car and I think McLaren are, are incredible car makers. And if you have the money and you want to go spec your own one, why not? If you know that the depreciation is going to be there, but I just like everyone to have all the information, at least the way I see it and the way that I've maybe learned about this over the years. So I think that the 765 LT is going to be hit pretty hard by depreciation. Maybe not in the first six months, but at least in the next year, you'll be able to pick some up for a pretty good buy. Spec dependent, of course. So that's another one that potentially right now, I would maybe just not pull the trigger on. This one's going to be controversial. The Ferrari 488 Pista. This one is all the wrong way around. So effectively, when they came out, there was such a high demand for these and you couldn't get your hands on one. So they were selling for way over. They were selling for up to 100,000 over the list price. The list price is around 291,000 euros without options. Very quickly, that kind of jumps up with Ferraris. So not actually a crazy list price for what it is. And the mid-engine V8 limited edition Ferraris have always kind of held quite well. The Scuderia, the 458 Speciali, Challenge Stradale. However, this is the first one with a twin turbo charged engine, which for purists, who are the people who usually will drive the price of these cars up, is not the best. It is absolutely stunning. It is, I've actually been lucky enough to drive one of these. It is such a great car to drive. So much power, so complete. In the same way as the 765 LT would be, it is just an incredible car. So there's nothing to fault it in terms of a mechanical object. However, they're making quite a few of them. 3,500 units made. And I'm not even sure if that's including the Spiders. So there's quite a few of them when you compare to Specialis or to Scuderias. So when at first they were very hard to get your hands on, at the moment, it's actually not that hard there are quite a few for sale on the secondhand market and dealerships are actually building up quite a bit of a stock with them. So you can get some fairly decent deals for them. And a lot of cancelled orders actually came in on those cars as soon as they kind of started turning. So they went up and they kind of appreciated at first then hit a bit of a roof and now they've been coming back down so that you can buy them for list or under list price just about. We managed to find an example of basically a brand new car for sale for 305,000 euros. And it's got a pretty heavy spec on it. So that actually puts it under list this price because this car with the spec it's got would have been around the 320,000 euro mark. So it shows that when they did appreciate right now we're on a downward curve and I think the current situation the current car market is not going to help that. So that's one that could potentially fool people and you wouldn't be expected to go down because it's a limited edition Ferrari and because there was so much hype about them at first. But right now it's one of the cars which is actually dropping in price the fastest and the more and more they come up for sale the more there are available the more dealerships are giving good prices on them and the more people stack miles on them, the more that price is going to shoot down. I mean, the biggest telling thing is that 458 Specialis actually cost more than Pistas today. Even though the car's older, older technology and definitely doesn't perform quite as much. It's just what the purists want and there are less available. So therefore, the 488 Pista is another one that's going to have to make this list. The last one, and I don't, this may get some stick, and this is the one which is kind of a bit of a shot in the dark because we don't really know. The Aston Martin Valhalla. Don't know, I've, I've definitely not said that right. It's a tricky one to say. Hypercar from Aston Martin. We're not in entirely sure when 
it'll come. We've been waiting for news on the Valkyrie, its bigger brother, for a while, but it's gonna be around a million pounds, 986 horsepower, 500 units made worldwide, and a V6, a race-inspired V6. Stunning car. Again, sure, it'll be great to drive. Won't be able to fault it. Um, it's kind of inspired by the Valkyrie. But what bothers me with this one a lot more is the fact that there is a Valkyrie there. So if you're going for the hypercars and a lot of these people who actually have the money to put a million euros or a million pounds into a car usually will have a few hypercars or will have bought a few things up and therefore will have potentially already got a Valkyrie. So it's kind of not quite the top of the range of what Aston offers and that can often knock a little bit off the price there. But then what scares me a lot more is the fact that the Vanquish concept, which they revealed at the same time, is a very similar looking car which is going to come in for basically a quarter of the price, which is fairly terrifying because if I had that kind of money and I bought a million euro hypercar and there was a version for a quarter of the price which looked very similar, I wouldn't feel too confident. The numbers, 500, even though that's very little, it's not that limited. And Aston Martin, unlike Ferrari, who kind of have an ongoing thing with these hypercars, haven't quite built up that order book of clients that are willing to spend a million pounds on one of their cars. So I'm not sure that they're going to be able to really get rid of all 500 straight away. And again, that then leads leads us to the problem of there being a higher supply than there is demand and that car potentially coming down, especially when you consider that if you're spending a ton of money on an Aston hypercar, why don't you just go for the Valkyrie, even though it's a lot more money, a lot of these people doesn't actually make a huge difference there. So that's why I see that actually sadly being a hypercar that could potentially drop down and maybe hover around the half a million, 600,000 pound mark, which is still a ton of money. When you put a million in, you're taking almost a half a million pound hit. So that's a car that I would actually stay away from. I am fully aware that none of us are probably in, in a state of being able to buy any of these cars. Right now is not the right time to do it. So this may be a completely irrelevant video, but it was something I was looking into. I find really interesting to find the deals which are good deals, but also what do we steer away from? Why? And when can we find those characteristics in other cars? Because the more you learn about the ones that are going down, the more you're likely to find out which ones are going to go up in the future. Let me know if you found this interesting. Comment down below if you want another one of these videos. We can do five more supercars, five more normal cars, five more luxury cars, whatever you prefer. Also, while we're at it, if you haven't hit the subscribe button down below, 73% of your still not subscribed it's very easy just press that button and the little bell right next to it and we'll be seeing you for another video very soon thanks guys cheers and bye bye